Everybody asks me how long it took me to write my book, My Mother's Daughter, two years. Well, believe me, two years is a drop in the bucket compared to the 38 years and counting that has gone into my other big creation. I've been uh, getting a lot of help with that one because, folks, it's called a marriage. <laughs> married life. A while ago, my husband and I were all set to fly to Amsterdam for a much needed vacation and for once absolutely everything was ready. The bags were packed, the fridge cleaned out, the blinds drawn, limo waiting at the door, computers turned off, the travel gods were smiling on us. I checked my passport for about the 147th time, oh, right where I thought it should be, and suddenly my husband piped up, gee, that reminds me, better grab my passport. Guess what? It wasn't where he left it. Next thing I know, he's tearing the whole place apart, every drawer, closet, portfolio, pocket, Shopping bag, toolbox, <laughs> no passport. Well, you know what I did, of course, the helpful wifely routine. Where was it when you last saw it, dear? <laughs> My husband is an organized guy. I just knew it had to turn up. I mean, this was a guy who at the time hired and fired people like me. <laughs> Fifteen minutes went by. Fifteen minutes of heart-pounding, nerve-crunching mayhem. Stuff is being thrown all over the place. Finally, I could see the plane taking off for Amsterdam without us. And I'm not proud to say it, but I lost it. I threw myself face down on the carpet like a toddler headed for a long time out, and I began to sob. The most amazing things can occur to you when you've got your face down on that carpet. Whose problem was this anyway? Hey, I've got my passport. I said to my husband, I've got a plane to catch, dear. When you find your passport, meet me in Amsterdam. It was the most relaxing flight I've ever had. starting to like the thought of a few days in Amsterdam by myself, <laughs> shopping. But wouldn't you know, he caught up with me in 22 hours, clever guy. <laughs> Organization. <laughs> we had an absolutely wonderful vacation. And as much as anything that we saw or did together, what I remember is the sheer exhilaration and release of getting on that plane. I reclined my seat all the way and toasted my hard-won good sense with a big glass of champagne. <laughs> Up there at 30,000 feet, I finally understood just how far I had come in my life because, you see, I used to suffer from chronic depression. I'll tell you what it was like to live with depression. A nagging negative tape kept playing in my head and sometimes it was just kind of a low background noise. Other times it drowned out all the music of the world. I remember exactly what it said. You are doomed to disappointment. You don't make the grade. Your needs do not matter. Joy is not for you. I remember one night after work, I was probably about 36, sitting on the kitchen floor in my bathrobe 
with a glass of wine in my hand and tears streaming down my face. My son Ben was nine years old and he said to his father in a small plaintive voice that just tore at me, Dad, why is mom crying? My husband said he didn't know. I didn't know either. All I knew was that I absolutely despised myself for being trapped in my own god-awful pain when my family needed a mother and a wife. I thought to myself, if I just tried harder, if I was not so selfish, this would not be happening. I thought I was selfish and sometimes I was told that I was selfish. I felt utterly alone. But of course you can guess, you know, I belonged to a vast and silent horde. One in five people are going to suffer from depression at some point in their lives. It's been called the common cold of mental illness. Doesn't that sound benign? Well, every year, 4,000 Canadians take their own lives because of depression and other mental illnesses. Many of these people are so shockingly young. They should have years and years of productive life ahead of them. Years to build, lead, nurture, create, to learn and share their learning. That is a lot for Canada to be losing. When somebody is fighting cancer, everybody talks about how brave, how gallant they are, how inspiring. With mental illness, it's a different story. I know a woman who's been fighting a serious mood disorder for longer than I've been on this earth. Once she tried to kill herself, she turned to a friend for support, and the friend said to her, Everybody has troubles. You just caved in. I wish that so-called friend could be sitting here tonight. I'd like to tell her face to face, look, I too have had a mental illness. It runs in my family and I am not ashamed. And it has not stopped me from having fun. It has not stopped me from living my life or achieving my goals. Because I have learned the hard way that people with mental illnesses can fight just as hard as anybody with a physical illness. The difference is that we don't get any credit for trying. Talking about mental health, telling the truth about it, naming the names was part of my mission at Chatelaine. Because I shared my own experience, readers trusted me with theirs. And I got a lot of amazing letters. The one that particularly stays on my mind came from a young husband and father who was unable to work because of a disabling depression. He couldn't provide for his family, so of course he thought he was failing as a man. He wrote to us because we had just published some advice for uh, people who wanted to help a friend with breast cancer. And he wanted me to know that all of the tips applied equally to him and his family. I'd like you to hear the advice. Be there. Don't treat me differently. Please do ask me how I am. Make a concrete gesture of support. Listen to my family. Take my kids out. Bring food. Be patient with my work habits. Listen to me. Do unto others. This man could have been my colleague, my neighbor, or my friend. He could have been your brother, he could have been your son, he could have been your husband. When I first recovered from depression, I used to look back on my dark years and think of all the things that I missed. I'd think about the fun that I didn't have, the adventures that I didn't pursue, the contributions I just didn't have the energy to make. I've come to see, though, 
that if not for depression, I would not be the woman I am today. I would not be able to speak for people who can't speak for themselves. And I would not be so charged up and enthused about what we can all accomplish for the silent horde once we leave this room. The time is right, the springboard is in place, it is going to be a great adventure. Thank you very much.